obviously my first time doing a live on YouTube, so I had to have a tech person. I had to have a tech person come and tell me that I'm muted. Ah, okay. Start from the beginning, people. Are you ready for this? I'm sorry for no sound. You guys are so great for telling me this. I'm not good at reading and uh, talking at the same time. Multitasking is not my thing. Okay. So if you're coming from the Midnight Quilt Show, welcome. I'm Susie Williams of Susie Quilts. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, and I'm a quilter, if you couldn't tell from my name. I'm a quilter. I've been quilting for a long time. Um, let's see, uh, 15 years? 16 years, 18 years. 18 years, I've been quilting for 18 years. I started when I was 15. I'm older than I thought. Anyway, um, and so I, I started with traditional quilting, and, and now I, I've, I've gotten into modern quilting, and I write modern quilt patterns. I write tutorials, I make videos, and I actually, I got to fly to Blueprint HQ and uh, film a really fun series with mini quilts. So you can take your scraps, you can have, you know, just like an ounce of sewing knowledge, maybe not even an ounce. Just thread your machine and you're good to go. And we make really fun mini mojo quilts. It's all about getting your creative mojo going. So that's what these mini quilts are about, and you can find that class on Blueprint. That's where I am. So I'm just gonna go through some of your questions, some of your, you know, any kind of uh, tips that you might wanna have about quilting. I, I'm gonna just kind of specifically talk a little bit about this one right here. It's a mirror. What I'm looking at is a mirror, and I'm not very coordinated, so it's over here. <laughs> this is the campfire quilt, so I'm going to talk about a couple tips with that, and uh, and then I'm going to answer your questions. I'm so I'm so sorry about that volume. I don't know. Okay, so my my big tip with this campfire quilt, and Angela had some really great tips about keeping your 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 medallion straight and and not you know making things too wonky even though I kind of like a little bit of wonk I think it looks cool so if your square becomes a rhombus that's just fine but you know if, if you like to get seams really good and flat this is a tailor's clapper and it's just a piece of wood it's really nothing fancy you can buy it you could cut down a tree and make your own um, but basically you just give a seam a little bit of spray with your steam and then let the seam cool underneath your tailor's clapper. You lift it up and it's magical. I mean, I was just thinking, did you ever have a grandpa who wore those like dockers, those khakis that with the pleats that were so crisp and you always just thought, grandpa, how do you get those pleats so crisp? I mean, he was probably using the tailor's clapper. So we quilters can use it too. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to go through a couple questions that some of you have already given me in the comments of the Midnight Quilt Show, and keep asking your questions, keep telling me if my volume is off, hopefully I'll figure out if I'm muted again. <laughs> um, okay, so one question was, what was your inspiration for the campfire quilt? How did you pick the colors? Um, so my inspiration, like I said, I am a traditional quilter at heart. I grew up making Ohio star blocks and log cabin blocks and sawtooth stars were my sweet spot when I was, when I was a 16 year old girl. Um, so I love a good log cabin and, and over here, and I, I designed this when I thought, what if we just made a log cabin the entire quilt? And it was a medallion, and we started, and we just let it grow. And the fun thing about a medallion is that you can just stop. You know, if you get burned out, or if the baby's crying, and you're like, you know, I'm over it. You can just stop, and you've got a quilt. You've got at least a pot holder, or maybe a wall hanging, or a pillow. And whatever you feel like doing, you can make that work. And that's the beauty of a medallion. So that's the kind of fun thing about the campfire quilt. Um, one question here is, when you find some fabric that you love, all caps, but you don't have specific quilt design in mind, what do you do with it to start out? Well, my rule of thumb is that if I like fabric, I buy a yard. If I love it, I buy two. I mean, if I just like die over it, I buy four. Because I'll probably have to use it for backing. And four yards is safe for backing for a throw. Um, I don't know. I mean, it is hard to cut into that 
fabric that you love. It is hard. I splurged and I bought a ton of Liberty of London fabric and I spent a lot of money on it. And I've been like fussy cutting and I've been used, doing applique and I've been carving into that for years. I think it's probably six years old and I'm just, you know, you got to use it though, right? Life's too short not to use your pretty fabric. Um, okay, so another question I have is, I love this quilt. Yay! Uh, and Susie is fabulous. Wow, I love this question. Okay, love her class too. Would love to make a smaller version for a baby boy quilt. Yeah, in the pattern, there's so many sizes. I mean, but like I said, you could just stop. Um, there's baby, throw, queen, king. Oh, goodness. I mean, if you are motivated, you could make a king out of this. It would be pretty. Um, I have an old-fashioned sewing machine. Any tips on how to use it? So that's one question that just came through via Instagram. Okay, so one of my absolute favorite things to do is hang out in sewing Facebook groups. So I have a Facebook group, Suzy Quilts Patterns. You can join it. It's just the nicest group of people. I mean, I, I always just think, oh, I wish you lived by me. Like anytime someone writes a comment, I just think, oh, I wish I knew you in real life. So if you have an old sewing machine and you join one of these sewing groups, I mean, chances are someone else in this group is going to have a sewing machine or knowledge of a sewing machine that's similar. So build up your confidence, write your question on the forum. Nobody will bite. Everybody will love it. People love giving their advice. People love telling you what to do, you know, <laughs> anyway, so, you know, it's great because it's a community, it's like this big collective think tank about sewing. Yeah, and we all love sewing. Do you have fat quarter friendly patterns? I do. I, the Stars Hollow quilt pattern is fat quarter friendly, it's, you just grab some fat quarters. More and more, I'm, I'm realizing quilters love fat quarters. I mean, I knew that. I always knew that. Um, but I, I'm a graphic designer. That's my, my professional background. And so when I design, I love these big strips of color. And it's hard to make big strips of color if I am confined to my 21 by 18 inch fat quarter. So more and more, I'm trying to think inside the fat quarter box. And Mod Mountains, that just came out. We just finished a sew along with that. That's all triangles. It's kind of wonky triangles. That's fat quarter friendly. But a lot of quilt patterns can be fat quarter friendly, even if they weren't originally meant for fat quarters. So I, I just wrote a blog post about the triangle jitters quilt pattern, and I showed you how I made it fat quarter friendly. So you can kind of just mash up all the yardage and be like, okay, I know there are four fat quarters in a yard, so if it says I need two yards, I probably need eight fat quarters. You know, something like that, and then you can just play with it. So, you know, you can have fun with fat quarters, even if a pattern you love isn't meant for fat quarters. Um, another question I'm getting is, do you stabilize before quilting? Do you baste and quilt your own quilts? Yes and no. I stabilize, no, I don't do that. I, I do baste my own quilts if I quilt it myself. So I, I typically quilt my own quilts because I, I love doing that. I'm no Angela Walters. I don't free motion quilt like, you know, a genie out of a bottle, like all magical like. But I do really love, you know, the the comfort and the hum of my machine. I love wearing those quilting gloves. So, you know, it's really meditative. Um, I, I typically do more straight line quilting. I use my walking foot. I do different walking foot designs instead of free motion. But that's what I typically do. However, this one, this one right behind me, uh, this one I did send out to a free motion quilter, a long arm quilter. She's great. She lives in New Hampshire. And again, I found her just through social media. I, I've never been to New Hampshire, um, but through different quilt conferences through quilt con I got to meet her and and I found her and it, you know that's just the beauty of this online sewing community you get to meet great people um yeah and they and they end up doing beautiful work for you too okay here's another one um how useful are fat eights besides mini quilts what else could they be used for well you know there are quilting books that are written specifically for certain pre-cuts so if you are really into fat eighths, I'm sure you could look up a quilting book uh, at your library or on, you know, in your local quilt shop on Amazon. And I'm 
positive someone has written that book. I know when I was uh, 15, I bought a, I went to a, a, a guild meeting. <laughs> I was hands down the youngest one there by a solid 15 years. I went to a guild meeting and there was a speaker there and she had just written a book for charm packs. So every single quilt pattern in her book was for charm packs and it was a beautiful book. And um, it looked really scrappy, and it appealed to me as a 15-year-old. So, uh, you know, pre-cuts are fun. You, you can always, you know, do a quick Google search and find find someone who's written something specific for that. Um, I would like to find scrap patterns. I'm also new to quilting, just started. Well, congrats, welcome, welcome to quilting. Um, also, what walking foot designs are there? Okay, there's a great book. It's just called Walk. And it's by um, Jackie Gearing. She actually has a class on Blueprint. I've watched it because she's so good. I've seen her speak. She's awesome. But just with your walking foot, you can do beautiful quilting designs. Beautiful. And she'll show you exactly how to do it. She goes really slowly because I can kind of get really close to the camera and or the, the computer and just stare, you know, and then I rewind and then I rewatch. And she goes slowly so people like me can get it. Um, another question just came in, do you spray base or pin? Okay, this, I feel like this is a real point of contention for a lot of sewers because I personally hate, with a capital H, spray based. I hate it. It gets everywhere. I have ruined my suede slippers because of spray based. I mean, I still, I st I'm not a, a super clean person, so I don't love mopping my floors. I don't know who does love mopping their floors. Apparently spray basters love mopping their floors. I don't know. I'm a pinner. I, I have purchased my pins years ago. I will never need to purchase more pins. I use safety pins and I am perfectly content to never ever have a bottle of, or a can of spray based in my house. I, this stuff is creepy. I don't like it. So did that answer your question? That over answered your question. <laughs> um, okay, Elizabeth Steely, Steele? Steel. Any tips on piecing tricky points in fabric heavy seams? Um, it kind of depends on your points, really. Uh, in the Mod Mountains Sew Along that we just wrapped up, if you go to suzyquilts.com on the blog, every week I have tips and videos on how to sew triangle tips together. And this last video series that I did, I showed exactly where on your seam you want to hit so your triangles are perfectly at that tip. And it's, it's a short video. It's easy to watch. Um, it's probably like two minutes. So you can watch that and see if it's helpful. I think triangles can be tricky because sometimes you're working on that stretchy biased edge and sometimes you're sewing, you're sewing, all of a sudden the tip just kind of jumps off, you're, you know? And... But I, I, if you go slowly and you watch this video, I really think that it, it should help, especially if you're sewing triangles. Um, I love your enthusiasm. It's infectious. You know, I'm so glad you're saying that because, side note, I just had a baby not too long ago, and I am so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired all the time. And so leading up to this, um, this thing I'm doing, this live, <laughs> leading up to this live, I was just sitting, I was nursing him, and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Is my brain going to work enough? But then, you know, I jump on, and I get to connect with you guys, and all of a sudden, I'm in it. I'm having fun. You guys are fun. Um, okay, thank you for removing inappropriate... Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not paying enough attention to the comments to know what's going on there. Okay, here's another question. Did you have any problems with the long seams bowing? Oh, that is a great question. Okay, back to the campfire quilt. So when people were making this, um, and my, my pattern testers were making this, different people bought the pattern were making this, one thing that some people were struggling with is that it ballooned a little in the center. So um, picture, uh, I don't know, a balloon? Wow, picture a balloon, and then there's doing that in the center. So the reason for that is because you were pressing with your iron, you were either steaming too much, which was causing the fabric to stretch, and you were pressing with your iron, and so it was warping as you were growing out. Do you like this motion? Okay, 
just like this motion, it was warping as you grow out. So if you are gonna try to keep your square square and not balloony or rhombusy, um, you do have to just, I, I finger press open with my fingers and then I press the iron down. And then if you use this Taylor's clapper, just a little bit of steam, don't move like this with your steam, just just like that. Make that noise too. It'll work. Um, but also let me tell you, if you have Boeing, if you have ballooning, um, I watched this intensely in my Facebook group because some people were uploading their pictures and with their quilt tops and they were saying, okay, this is freaking me out. This is ballooning. Is it going to go away when I quilt it? And it did. I mean, every situation of people having that issue, they basted it and it went away and then they quilted it and it was just gone. So even if you do get a little bit happy with that steam and, you know, you just kind of push everything out to the side and it's all stretched, you'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be totally fine. And if you don't think you'll be fine, send it to a really good long arm quilter and they'll deal with it for you. <laughs> and they'll do a great job because, you know, they're the best. Pre-washing fabric, question mark. Well, you know, if you got the time. <laughs> if you got the time, do it. If you don't, well, whatever. Do you use specialty rulers? And if so, which would you recommend? You know, I don't. I use pretty basic rulers. The only time I get myself some special rulers is if I get different size squares for squaring up because I really do love a good square ruler. So if you were to walk into my sewing studio, you'd probably see I have these racks of just every single size of square because I really like a nice crisp block. Mm. <laughs> so that's what I have. But you know, I don't have special curves. I don't, like I said, I do some free motion quilting, but I don't do free motion quilting with, uh, with rulers. So I don't really have specialty rulers, no. What type of batting do you prefer to use? I love Quilter's Dream. I love it. It's consistent, which is awesome. So I know if I get Quilter's Dream last year, this year, next year, it's always gonna be the same. There's not weird, inconsistent holes in it. I mean, I love their wool. Mm, it's so good, it's so warm, it's so puffy. I love their oriental blend. It's, um, it's a bamboo silk. Oh, silk blend. It's great for summer. I just wrote a blog post about this, about how cool it is. So if you're living in Florida and you're a quilter, or, you know, if you're just living in Michigan and it's summertime, get some bamboo. Get some bamboo quilt uh, batting. I'll have to check. I've just been checking stores. Yeah, check online. You know, there are a lot of small quilting shops that sell exclusively online, and they have uh, batting that you can buy, too. So, um, but you know, always uh, go into your local quilt shop, you know, ask what they have, ask what they like to use. You know, there could be a good reason they stock what they stock. Or also if you go in and you're like, I want this, maybe they'll get it. Maybe they'll get it for you. So, you know, that's always kind of nice to build that relationship. Um, what other questions do you have for me? Okay, after I press the block, I set a big ruler on it and it comes out nice and flat, yeah. Similar concept to a clapper. So I guess if it cools, if it cools while it's flat, pressed, then it's crisp, just like grandpa's slacks. What are some of the quilting designs you would suggest for a pre-beginner? A pre-beginner? Is that like you're a conceptual quilter? Are you just in that um, contemplative stage? <laughs> um, okay, if you're a pre-beginner, I suggest that you watch some videos on how to quilt. If you're a beginner, I think a, a solid straight line quilting always looks good. I, I'm not a beginner quilter, and I still go back to straight line quilting. I love that. I have a tutorial on that as well, on how to make sure you don't get some weird warping tensions. Um, because that can be kind of a, a frustration if you're just starting off and you do it and all of a sudden you're like, why is my fabric waving? Why does everything look weird? Look at that blog post. at suzyquilts.com and I'll tell you. <laughs> what do you do with all your quilts? You can't hang or use them all. Well, you can. <laughs> Should you? Okay, no. Um, I'm behind oh my goodness, behind me, I have quilts on quilts, so you can just kind of continuously stack, but I give quilts away. I've sold a handful of quilts, but mostly I give quilts away. 
You know, my family loves getting a quilt from me. I think my parents have six, six of my quilts. They, you know, I actually made my very first quilt for my 15-year-old boyfriend. He still has it. Who doesn't love a quilt? You know, you give someone a quilt and they're your friend for life. So I got lifelong friends just because I'm a quilter. <laughs> um, a nine patch, question mark? Great question. <laughs> what is the question? Is the question, what is? What is a nine patch? Well, a nine patch is when you sew, you can strip piece, long strips together, and then you slice it up and you sew them back together so that you have bonk, 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 bonk of dark fabric and then light fabric. Oh, I'm, I'm being told to scroll up because I'm missing a lot of questions. <laughs> um, you can buy a Taylor's Clapper on Amazon. So true, Smitten Kitten. Cute handle, too. Um, I find a lot of problems go away when I iron with spray starch. Oh, totally. Love spray starch. You know what I like to do, though? It's before I even cut, I like to spray my fabric with starch. And that way I just know it's all going to be crisp. Nice and crisp. And then when I'm doing my pressing, I, I do the clapper action. So it's like a wham bam. Punch. Punch of pressing. Where do you, oh, a lot of questions about the Taylor's Clapper. I did not cover that too well. So yeah, you can get it online. Or like I said, if you know a carpenter, they would probably be happy to just find you a scrap of wood and make you something similar to this. Don't use soft wood. Did I say that? So um, I'm pretty sure pine is a soft wood. Don't use that. Uh, walnut, I think, is a hard wood. Also oak. Possibly a hard one. <laughs> uh, or you could just buy a Taylor's Clapper and not even worry about what what wood is hard and what is soft. <laughs> okay. What are the best sites to sell my work? Oh, and I'm sewing now. I'm assuming sell your quilts. Yeah. Um, Etsy. I think a lot of people have success with that. What I have found is, um, you know, if you want to sell something, um, give give a lot of stuff away. You know, teach teach something, um, you know, build relationships, and and then, you know, people, people want to support you. If you are giving things away, if you're encouraging, if you're, you know, a part of a group that's, you know, teaching, uh, the online community is awesome. So if you, you know, get an Instagram, if you're, you know, sincerely engaging and making friends, I think that community builds and it snowballs, and it's much easier to... Um, to sell things to people when uh, when you have a relationship. So Etsy, was that was that the answer? <laughs> Etsy. Uh, will you provide the link to that video on triangles? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, so that would be if you go to my website, um, there's a, a drop down tab for so long and anything having to do with mod mountains. That's the triangle um, pattern. Anything having to do with that, um, it, it, we talk a lot about triangles. Um, what kind of pattern of quilt is good for a first-time quilter? Oh, my baby's coming in. <laughs> my baby's coming into the room. Um, a first-time quilter, I think a solid half-square triangle pattern is really nice. I think triangle jitters is one of mine. It's just all half-square triangles, and um, you don't have to think too hard. It's the same block, just rotated a few different ways, and um, it looks great. It's a, it's a really nice modern quilt that um, I enjoy making. I've made it a, a lot of times. Half square triangles never get old. You'll never get sick of half square triangles. Well, until you do, and then you take a break and then you come back. Um, okay, I think, I think we pretty much covered it. My baby just walked into the room. Apparently, he wants something. <laughs> come on in. Um, this is Desi. Oh, he's in his pajamas. He's like, Mom, I'm ready for bed. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off here, but um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for your great questions. Be sure to sub subscribe to 